Hello and welcome along to this session. Here I'm going to be setting up a migration with project for a mailbox migration and I'm going to be using the application registration and really talking you through how we would configure the source and target tenants to be able to communicate with the migration with console. So as I do that, I'm going to just quickly show you where this uh, information comes from because it is in the articles here. So if we go in and do the performer migration in the help center and we go down to exchange online, here we go here and just down here to the exchange online to exchange online, it'll take you into the, the module which talks about how to do the entire migration end to end. The part I'm interested in here is going to be down this side here when it goes about talking uh, the source environment set up and it's this link so this is the required permission for performing those migrations and here we go so looking at this you can see there's our steps to go through we're going to start off here at step one which is creating the new application registration jumping over here to my test tenant which is the the cozy mouse one uh, which will be our source for the migration what we do and just by the way the, the setup we do for the target is exactly the same so I'm going to cover one setup in this video you do exactly the same thing in your your target uh, tenant as well so if you're in the admin center just go across to identity and that'll take you into what we always consider to be Azure AD, but it's now the Enter ID. And you can see here's our main screen for that. We go to Applications and we look at App Registrations here. And you'll see you've probably got a few in there already if we look at all applications here. Um, you see you've, you've got what you might have done in the past. But we're just going to add one now for the Migration Wiz. So we click on the New Registration here and we give it a name. I'm just going to call it Migration Wiz. I'll put in October 2024. This is a reference for me there. And we say it's going to be the single tenant. We don't need to put anything in this anymore. And we just hit register. And that'll give us a setup here, which we then need to do a few extra things around the authentication and also give it some permissions as well. So let me show you if you're following along in the help desk article where we've got to here. We've got here and down to this section here, which is the authentication. So we'll jump back over and click on authentication. And you can see here, we'll say enable flows, make that yes and hit save. And that is now done. So we can move on to the API permissions. So we go to here, API permissions. And you can see it's got the basic one, which is the, the graph read allocated to start with. Uh, but we'll just go in now and say add a permission. And we'll say APIs my organization uses. And it's easy here if you just type in uh, Office, you can see it comes up with the, the list here. We want we want is Exchange Online. So we do that and we're going to choose delegated permissions for this one. And we're going to find the EWS and say EWS access as user all. Tick that and add the permission. Now the next one it needs, we do an add a permission again. And we say, once again, API my organization uses, key in the office, exchange online. But this time we're going to choose application permissions here. And we will be choosing this full access as app. And add that in. And then we need to say the grant admin consent for that cozy mouse and say yes. And these will change to being granted, as you can see on the right hand side here. So jumping back to the article quickly, you can see we've now passed here, assigned the APIs, we've selected those and just scroll through this block here. You can see we've added the full access as app, we've done all of that, we've grant the admin consent, and now it's asking us to grab the app ID and the tenant ID from the application registration. What we do here is we're gonna to need to put those into the migration with project. So it's handy to uh, just to copy and paste those into a notepad screen and then they're easier to get to later on. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we go back to the overview for this and you can see here is our application client ID and there's the tenant ID. So we'll grab this one first and just bring up notepad and we'll call this one, let's just call it client ID, paste that there and we'll actually put in tenant ID just to get ready for that one. Come back into this screen, we'll We'll paste that out into there as well. Now the client secret we're going to create next. So I just put that ready to receive that as well. And we do that by going into the certificates and secrets here. And we're going to be saying new client secret. This acts as a kind of a password into this API call. So we'll put in here 
migration with. We will let it expire. Uh, recommended is six months. Um, if your migration is going shorter than that, you could make it shorter, obviously longer as well. Um, I'm, I might just say 90 days for this one. We don't want it hanging around for too long. And we hit add there. Now the value here is only displayed once. Um, it, it hashes out otherwise when you when you uh, go back to that screen. So you really do want to just copy that to clipboard now and drop that in there so we've got that. So back to our help desk article just now, you can see now we've got those IDs and I've gone ahead and I've done the client secret done there. And now we're ready to set up the migration with project. So we don't need that one anymore. So what we do here is we'll go and start a project in the console which we do here with the create project. And it will obviously be a mailbox project here. So we'll put in a, a name and this one will be a new customer, which we'll put in as cozymouse.com and cozymouse and save that. There we go. Now in the next step is where we get to configure the source endpoint. So this is where we'd click new and we'll give it a name. We'll call this one Cozy Mouse M365 source and the endpoint type is going to be Microsoft 365. Now these are the credentials for the admin account that you would have created uh, previously just to be able to access information in the tenant. Uh, it doesn't need to be a global admin or any uh, uh, writing ability in there. It just needs to have read write. So a global reader is perfectly adequate for that. So I do have one set up in there. Uh, actually you could call it migwiz at cozymouse.com. Let me show you that in the identity console so you can see what it refers to. So back into the enter ID here, if I sit on all users over here, see if I go down a bit, you can see all my users in this tenant and you'll find there is one here called migration whiz. There it is, migwiz at cozymouse. And let's have a look at that because you can see it's a, a standard account. And if we look at the assigned roles it has, it has global reader. It does not have global admin, just the global reader. Um, and obviously the, the password attached, which we will then uh, put into the console. So you do need to create one of these. Um, now it does need to have uh, an exclusion on MFA. It can't have 2FA turned on uh, for this to work. It needs to have that removed. So I'll put the password in here, add that. Now, never for that. Now, this is the information we collected earlier for the client ID, tenant ID, and the client secret. So what we need here is just quite easily to go and grab each one of these and paste that in. Like so. And the secret there. And next step. And you see it's going to jump to the destination settings now. For the destination, I've actually gone ahead and done all the work we've just done previously in that tenant. So I'll put the details in here. We'll select the endpoint 365, and that's going to be migwiz at planium.com, which is our, our target environment. And we'll put our password in here, like so. Hit add, and we get the same details, which are going to be the uh, application ID. Now, if you look at what I did in Notepad, you can see I've done that already. So there's our client ID, which we'll put into here. The tenant ID in this one, and obviously the client secret last. This one here. Now what we're doing here, when we drop that down, we need to specify where the target tenant exists. What is the location that's closest to it? It will make sure the, right, the migration has the best performance if you put the uh, location settings being correct in here. So we'll choose the US for this one. Now we're not going to be doing coexistence for this project, so we hit save and go to summary. And it'll take us into this screen where we can hit the save project. And all going well, we get the option to add things in there. There we do. Good. So it's happy that it's taken those details in. And we can now go ahead and add all the mailboxes we want to um, put into the project. So thank you for watching. Hope that helps with a nice, smooth, and easy creation of a MigrationWiz project for what you require in the source and the target tenant. Thank you.